Hello, this is the Preferring Prawn here with a wiring guide and setup instructional for the NZXT C1500 Platinum. This is a Platinum PSU with some really nice highlights to it and a mass of cables. It includes, for example, two 12 volt high power connectors in the box, as well as a whole lot of PCIe power connectors as well. So there's plenty of cables in here for wiring all sorts of things. And I'm going to show you the setup for it and all the different things that you need to know about what the cables are for, where they plug in and the ones you're going to use or might not need during your build process. I'm using this in the H7 Flow RGB 2024, but it's obviously usable in other builds as well. You will notice it has a zero RPM fan button at the rear that you can press there and turn that fan off. You don't even need it. But I'd recommend keeping that on, frankly, because you won't find it's too noisy and it's better to keep it cool. Now, in the bag, you will find a lot of cables. Here you can see them all laid out for your viewing pleasure. Now, obviously, this includes a UK plug because I'm from the UK. But I'm going to show you some of the setup and wiring for the other logic here. I'm going to start with the 24-pin power connectors for your motherboard. This is three cables that plug into the motherboard section in the top left here. You see it was motherboard 20 plus 4 is the starting one. I'm going to show you this outside the case, outside the build, so it's really easy to see where things plug in. But the first cable you need is the 24-pin power connector that you'll plug in at that top left. You'll notice it's split in two parts on one end, and that's the part that plugs into the power supply unit. So push that in and make sure it clips all the way in. Now, obviously, we won't plug the power cable into the motherboard just yet. You'd wait until you've actually got it installed in your case. I'm showing it here so you can see really easily where it is. You're going to push that in on the right hand side and you'll find there's a clip on the outer edge of it which hooks over the motherboard. So push that in until you find it clicks into place and it will hook there and then it won't be easy to get out. If this cable is loose for any reason, then your PC won't power on, and that could well be the problem if you've experienced that issue. So make sure it's seated in there well once you've got it installed. Next up is the two 8-pin CPU power cables. Now, these might not be necessary on every motherboard. For example, my motherboard has two of them required, and you only get two in the box with the power supply. But some motherboards might only have one, and one might have one 4-pin and one 8-pin. So it varies depending on your motherboard. But here we're installing two CPU power connectors in the top right. The marked end with CPU written on it actually plugs into the motherboard. The other end plugs into the power supply unit. Again, make sure these are pushed all the way in so that they clip into place fully before you try and seat them in the motherboard. Now, these will go in the top left of the motherboard, and it's the same for most motherboards, but what you'll see here is that one of the cables can be pulled apart and split into two, so it becomes a four-pin connector instead. This is ideal if you've got a motherboard which only requires one four-pin and one eight-pin, for example, so you can easily split that out. Like the 24-pin, this has a hook over the edge of it, so you need to make sure that's directed towards the top and hooks over the plastic hook on the 8-pin slot on your motherboard as well, and that will secure those down. Then you should have three connections hopefully connected up to your motherboard, or that's how it will be once you got to the full installation process. Next up is this connection, which is a Molex power connector. Now, you might not need this one. It's used for a variety of things. Historically, it was used for DVD and CD drives, and also it's used for liquid cooler pump reservoir combos. Here, I'm showing that you can use it with the Razer Chroma RGB controller, which is a device for controlling fan and RGB lighting. You plug the Molex cable into the peripheral and SATA port on the power supply unit, and obviously there's only one port that will connect to, or one cable that will plug into those ports. The rest of them have that Molex design to them. This is a daisy chain cable with multiple connectors on it, so you can actually plug multiple devices into it if you need to. And this, in this case, is a little bit fiddly. The Molex connector can be a bit of a faff. You'll see it has a design on it which basically has a flat side on one and a curve on the other side of it. But also, I find the cables can be a bit tricky because they move around sometimes in the connector. So it can be a bit a little fiddly to plug in. Just bear that in mind. Next up is the SATA power connector, which is much more common. This is used for SSDs and hard disk drives, as well as other devices like fan controllers, RGB controllers, and more. For example, this NZXT RGB controller requires that SATA power connection. 
You have several of these included in the box with the power supply unit, but also you'll see there are multiple connectors on the cable. So one part of the cable plugs into the power supply and then the other parts can be plugged into several different devices. You could use one in theory to plug in multiple different hard disk drives and SSDs and then a separate one for your fan controllers and other things. And I would recommend doing that because if it's got too much straw, obviously some devices might not work properly. But for the most part, you can usually plug in several devices without a hassle. So this NZX TRGB controller requires powering, for example, and there is a little notch on the inside of the connector, which means it will only plug in one way. So watch out for that. It has a kind of L shape to it in the way it slots in and plugs in. But that's how that connection would work. Similar sort of logic to the NZXT RGB and Fan Hub, which also has a SATA power connector on it. And that also needs powering if you're going to be using this in your system. Now, this will also work with other controllers like Corsairs, for example. Lee and Lee also has SATA power requirements for their controllers. So these SATA cables are used for a variety of different devices and are not limited to NZXT devices, so it's worth bearing in mind. And as I said, they'll also work with SSDs, which I'll show you in a little while. Next up is the PCIe power connections, which are used for your graphics cards. Now you will find there are a lot of these in the box and that's no bad thing. If you've bought a power supply with this much power in it, you've probably done that intentionally because you've got a high-end CPU and a high-end graphics card. So you'll be pleased to see there are a lot of these cables in here. Now these are eight pin power cables. On one end, it's put together and plugs into the power supply unit. On the other end, marked PCIe, you'll notice it splits in two, just like the CPU connector did, except now it's six pins and two pins. And in order to use this on most GPUs, you have to push those two things together and slot it in to the graphics card port. So here's a 3060 for demonstration purposes, a tiny little GPU which only requires one power connector, but you push those two things together and then clip it into the port. Now you'll see that it is possible once you're doing it to accidentally push the six pin in but still have that two pin be loose. It's really important you make sure the whole thing is seated all the way in. On this 3090, you'll find there are two of these ports and they both require eight pin power connectors. So you have to push those all the way in. Make sure you pinch it together first and then push it into the port. There's a hook on top you'll notice on both the port and on the power cable, make sure it's pushed all the way until it clicks into place and do this with both cables. Two separate cables plugged in there will ensure maximum power. Now obviously we have a lot of cables here and with the 40 series GPUs, you end up with potentially an adapter that looks something like this with four power connectors on it. Now you could plug in four cables to that and then have that run in and that would be the traditional way of doing it. That's what they'd want you to do. But you will obviously end up with a lot of cables. You can indeed do this with this power supply unit because there's enough cables to plug into this adapter. Obviously, as shown, it's the same sort of logic. The power supply end plugs into the part mark CPU and PCIe and then the 8-pin connector plugs into the adapter and you just repeat this process four times until you have four cables plugged into four ports of the adapter and then the single 600 watt connector on the other end plugs into the graphics card. Now this is a lot of cables and a lot of mess potentially. There is an alternative though luckily and it's included with this power supply unit. Indeed actually there's two of them so you might find this useful if you're going in extreme cases but you have a 600 watt cable in the box. There's actually two of these cables and two ports on the power supply unit mark 12 volt 2x6. These are 12 volt high power connectors which allow for 600 watts of power. So you can plug those directly into the power supply unit and then the other end into your graphics card without the need for that adapter that comes with the GPU. So you can abandon that and use this instead. Now obviously this has enough ports on it for two of these cables so you could potentially run two GPUs off of this if you wanted to in your system if you have that ability or if you have some reason to do it but you can see that you've got that option. Using this also means you free up the PCIe power connectors for something else you might have some other use for example Corsair's IQ link system and Lian Lee's TL LCD fans require an 8 pin PCIe power connector. My next tip is to plug in all the power cables that you're going to use. So this is why it makes sense to plan out your build before you start. Work out what power cables you're going to need. 
because it is a modular power supply unit, so you need to plug in what you're actually going to use. Plug in all the cables you're going to need, the motherboard cables, the SATA cables, the PCIe power cables, plug those all in beforehand, and then you can go about installing it in your case. For the installation, you want to make sure the fan faces outwards. So on some cases, the fan faces down towards the bottom where there's vents. On this case, it actually faces towards the side because it vents in from the inside. So the fan on the power supply unit pulls air into the power supply unit and then pushes it out the back where the power cable actually plugs in at the rear. So you need to make sure it's well vented. So we put it in this way round and then use the four hex screws to secure it to your case in the four corners of the power supply, securing it in well there. And then obviously you need to run the cables in the directions so you can reach the ports that I've shown. So the two eight pin CPU power connectors, for example, run up here on the top right, which would then be the top left of the motherboard. And you'd usually secure them down with Velcro ties or cable ties and plastic cable ties. The 24 pin cable goes on the left hand side here and untucking it under the Velcro ties here. As you can see, this is quite a chunky cable and quite difficult to manipulate. So you might want to use plastic cable ties there. Now for the SSDs and hard disk drives, you can see me using the SATA power connectors there. Don't forget you can connect up multiple drives easily in here. So you can see I've got a hard disk drive and an SSD there connected up, for example. And then we're going to use the plastic cable ties to secure the cables down. I'd actually recommend leaving this until the end of the build and you're sure everything powers on because otherwise you might find you've tied them down a bit too efficiently and it's hard to plug things in or if you need to unplug anything for any reason that can be a problem. So once you've installed your motherboard then you need to plug in the cables that I showed you for the power supply cabling. On this case you'll see there's a cable hiding bar which you need to work the cables through in order to plug it in and that's mostly the case on a lot of cases, try and neaten things up there. Don't forget that the 24 pin power cable can be a little bit tricky and it needs to be pushed in and clicked into place so it's well secured. And this can be a little fiddly, especially like in a position like this where you don't have much space to be able to negotiate that cable around. I often get asked about the two eight pin power cables on the top left, whether you should do it. And my answer is yes, you should plug them in. You have them, you have the ports, you have the cables, you definitely should plug them in, especially if you're using a high-end CPU because you want to make sure it's got enough power, especially for things like overclocking, which you might have on your motherboard as default. And you want to make sure your system runs stable. So I would recommend plugging them in, even if they are a little bit fiddly. The other thing to note is it's worth getting them in early before you're all in one cooler because otherwise you might not have enough space for it. Now for installing the graphics card, as I've shown already, this is a 4090, so the 12 volt hour power cable will be required here. You need to make sure you've got enough room in your case to ensure there's no pressure on that cable when it comes through and is plugged into the graphics card. So don't allow any strain on it or for it to be pulled from various different angles. Make sure there's enough space for it. Sometimes this might require vertical mounting of the graphics card, but not in this case because it does fit in there quite easily. That cable then runs through from the bottom and plugs into the GPU. Again, make sure it's fully seated because the problem a lot of people had with connectors melting was said to be down to them not being plugged in all the way, uh, either at the power supply end or the GPU end. They are actually making changes to these cables to improve them, and I've certainly not had one melt in my experience. But anyway, you'd plug those in and then you've basically finished your build, make sure everything's connected up nicely and you should find that it all turns on and boots wonderfully. If you want to see the build guide on this case, check out the links in the description to the full specs and the build of this case and this system. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.